So I decided I was going to go ahead and troubleshoot the sound, you know, because if, if we can get the sound to work, then when they do finally release a VA4 LCD, uh, we can go ahead and install that and have a working console. So I decided I was going to go ahead and take and try this with some headphones. And when I do that, I do get sound. But if I increase the volume, it's like it overdrives the amplifier or something. So I think that I need to just maybe inspect the board or something to see if maybe I installed a capacitor wrong. So, but as you can tell, sound works. Well, and, and, and that means to me is that everything on the motherboard, um, everything on the motherboard, so my, my, my processor is producing sound, and then that sound is being felt out of my, my, uh, my sound port into my sound card. So that tells me then that the problem must be on this right here. Is, but then why is it not coming out the speaker? So if I take my speaker, if I take my speaker, and let's own the speaker. So let's put our multimeter right here so we can see. Uh, if I take and measure on my speaker, I get 6.9 ohms. So this is probably an 8 ohm speaker, so that's should be should be okay, right? So now I don't know if this is also like a I don't know if this is like a uh, like a Game Boy to where when you plug in the headphones it interrupts maybe I should put some alcohol into the potentiometer for the volume and then maybe I should also uh, put some some alcohol into that headphone jack but let's just real quick let's uh let's plug in our speaker let's plug in our speaker and see maybe now that I plugged headphones in maybe it squared something away within the sound board here. Dude. Dude, I don't know how to plug this in. How do you plug this in? It's just Alright, so there we go. So let's uh Yeah, so we're still not getting sound. And we should be getting sound. And we are not. But I'm pretty sure the speaker is good. Alright, so let's put some alcohol into our port. Let's put some alcohol into our uh, potentiometer. Let's rub that around. Let's take this and plug it in. Plug it out. Maybe it got some corrosion in there or something. Cut it on. Yeah, we're not. Man, you know I really, really need an oscilloscope. All right, so we're not getting any. That didn't seem to fix the issue. So let's take this, let's take this off. Let's unplug, plug that, set it to the side. Let's bring in the microscope. All right. So it looks like our tracks, we're going to inspect our traces. Um, so it looks like we have a trace that runs from here to he somewhere underneath this. So S 
so it looks like let's figure out if we if we can see first let's make sure all our joints are good I mean they look hideously ugly but as long as they're connected we're good to go So, so we know we have a trace that runs here to here. I don't know which one of these. Yeah, this is gross, man. What is this? Is this metal or is that plastic? Oh, man. Yeah, that's metal. So I am going to say then that there's something in here. I mean, I could be wrong, as I often am, but. That's gross, man. Yeah, I, th I think... Okay, so ba based on what we've already kind of discovered, right? So we had corrosion so bad on the power board that it ate away the pads. Uh, so when I desoldered them to put in new capacitors, uh, the pads just came right off, right? So that's one issue. Another issue we had was obviously all of the capacitors were bad. Um, so we know that that was an issue. Capacitors had to be replaced and we did that. Then we found that liquid damage had caused a short between the ground leg of T1 and, and I guess either the input or output of T1, I'm not sure which. Uh, so that was, I was shorting the system out so it would not boot and it was causing uh, fire not necessarily fire, but you know what I'm saying. So I don't know what damage that did. That may have done, that may have, because T1 is for the backlight tube, that, that fluorescent tube that uh, illuminates the display. That's what T1 is used for, I'm assuming, to step up the voltage, voltage to some outrageous amount to apply power to that tube. Uh, I don't know if that had some kind of damage. And I don't know if liquid got into this right here. Yeah, and I, this isn't like a, I don't know. I don't know how this works, right? So if I plug in, let's see if we can see any visual indication of what happens when you plug in something. So we'll look here. I right, see it. Oh, wait, there's something right in here. If you notice, right in here, I see something moving. Can you even disassemble this thing? So we know that the amplifier is working. We know that that K2209, I'm assuming that's the 
amplifier. We know that that's working because we get output on our headphone jack. Because this has two, this has two pads. It has one. Okay, so so check this out. All right, so this other pin comes out here, comes down to here, comes to this capacitor, and then through that capacitor. And I'm guessing that's to take the DC off of the the line and it arrives somewhere under this chip. So what does this chip right here do? Hmm. I think I'm gonna have to look at the schematic. Alright, so this is the schematic of the uh, audio board for the Game Gear. So we know that um, we know that we have our five volts here. And our five volts comes in and it's felt to pin two of our audio amplifier. This is one of the capacitors that we changed. Um, this is one of the capacitors that we changed. This is a capacitor and then these two right here. Those are the five capacitors that we uh, put 100 microfarad capacitors in. Um, so audio, uh, so, so the other thing, ground is felt here. So I verified that I have five volts. I know I'm getting five volts because I'm getting audio on the output of my headphone jack. Uh, I did in fact verify that I had a good ground to pin to. Um, audio comes in on pins three and four, our right and left audio, and they come to these 56k ohm resistors. I verified uh, uh, continuity between those pins and those specific resistors, uh, and then I also verified continuity through those resistors to our potentiometer or our volume wheel. Um, I then took and measured from ground uh, to each one of those output pins of that potentiometer and one way I'm getting 30 ohms and the other way I'm getting roughly 10k so I I suspect that my it might be scratchy but it seems like the potentiometer is good uh, I then very verified uh, continuity between uh, those pins and the chip on, on my audio amplifier um, so I know that that path is good. I used a multimeter to do that. Um, coming out of the chip, and I also verified that we have a good ground going into the chip. Um, coming out of the chip, we have our audio. Um, and we know that at a minimum, we're getting, we have to be getting our right side audio because I'm getting audio in my headphones. The suspect path, I think, is this path here, which is my left audio. And I presume that left audio is what is driving our speaker since it's mono. Um, and the way you get stereo into um, our headphone jack is then that audio is felt both ways. It's felt this way uh, to our speaker, and it's also felt into our EMI filter and it looks like these are just basically three coils uh, so pin six and five, four and three, two and one um, are good. I need to verify that I have con because I, ha I haven't done that yet as I'm staring at this. I need to verify that I have continuity between pin two and one and then I'm certain that I have ground because I know when I measured on my headphone jack I or you know what did I get ground I'm not sure I'm gonna to have to check that to make sure I have ground at pin pin through through pins four to three and then six and five so I know I'm getting some audio I think I'm missing the left audio or maybe I'm getting the left audio uh, I'm not sure I don't have a, an oscilloscope with an oscilloscope I could just I could measure there I could measure there if I was getting an audio waveform then I'd know you know, I'd know beyond the shadow of a doubt, but I don't have an, an oscilloscope. And then the jack. So I presume that when there is no headphones connected, you have a ground potential that's felt up 
in pin 5 and then back out pin 4 down to the negative uh, wire of our headphone jack or a, our speaker as you were um, I'm not getting when I don't have the headphones um, plugged in I'm not feeling a ground potential on the negative jack so a couple of things that I'm gonna do I'm gonna measure these making sure that they're shorts across because those are just inductors um, I should have a short across and then if I do uh, then what I'm gonna do is again try to measure continuity between the negative portion or the negative wire on my jack to ground uh, and if I don't get it then I'm just going to short it I'm just going to take a piece of wire and short from ground to here and see uh, if that makes a change if that does not make a change then I'm going to pull my right audio coming out of this filter and I'm basically just going to uh, feed my right side audio directly into the positive portion of my jack so that's what I'm going to do that's the plan for now but I just figured I'd kind of talk through the schematic um, see if we couldn't figure something out so anyhow that let's go back to the bench and see what we can do all right so from the previous clip we kind of talked in the schematic through this uh, this circuit board um, this is pin 2 so it's 1 2 3 4 5 5 and 6 um, so pins uh, pin 2 was 5 volts pin 3 and 4 were my left and right audio those are felt uh, to these two 56k ohm resistors located here and here and then on the other side of those two resistors they go to my potentiometer and then coming out of these two pins of my potentiometer they then are direct shorts over to pins uh, 1 and 3 so one and three of this chip and then coming out of this chip it was the uh, left and right um, and the one I'm concerned with is my my path for uh, C7 because I'm missing audio on my speaker so uh, this is my EMI filter and so when we when we check resistance on this Let's see if I can get this in here Let's see, you know what we're gonna have to raise up the uh, the old deal here so um, if I were to measure resistance between those we have zero ohms And then zero ohms and then zero ohms so I know that two of these go to my headphone jack two of these outputs right um, or do they I'm confusing myself now y'all so it said pins I think it said uh, three and four which I'm I presume to be these middle pins I don't see any indication of how uh, you can tell which is pin pin one or is this pin one maybe and in any event if you look at here this is c3 it's where c3 would be i took those off so i could see better um, and this is the negative side of c3 and c3 is the filtering cap on our five volt rail um, so the negative side of that should go to ground and if i measure from the negative side to ground I don't I don't get I don't get ground and I should have ground um, so that tells me then this is connected to here oh come on thing this is connected to here uh, and it's also connected to to the center pin so I'm, I'm assuming then that this is in fact ground. So 
where does that ground come from? Because when I when I when you trace this here and up, it goes to this via, right? And we flip that over, that's that via there. And then that goes to this pin here of my headphone jack. So the other side of that then runs, looks like out and underneath this potentiometer. Uh, I may have to take this off to see what is what. Because I know that this is ground right here. This is ground. If we get our multimeter in here. If I go from there to there. That is my ground pin. So I'm wondering if that ground potential is felt up and around. So I'm going to have to take that potentiometer off and take a look under there and see. So I will be back once I have that off. I do not get it. Because that comes up. So does this headphone jack get the ground Does the headphone jack get, because this is obviously a ground, does it get the ground through the EMI filter this way? But when you, when you go to this point right here and you flip it over, that's that point here. Hold on a sec, I'm confusing myself again. So that goes through here and then that goes to here, which is this pin right here, which goes from there up to here. And then, so then where does this freaking thing get its ground from, bro? Because that's just a loop, you know what I'm saying? There has to be another pin inside here that internally that that is one of these pads must go to ground. But which one? I don't I can't tell. This goes here. Bro, I'm about to take this off too. Goodness. I will disassemble this entire freaking thing to figure it out. By God, I will do it. Alright, so this pin goes to here. Which makes sense. It makes sense. All right, I gotta figure this out and then I'll explain it. All right, so I think I figured out the kind of numbering pattern of this jack right here. So, so this is pin one. Let's let's look at it from this way. This is pin one, and it comes down to our EMI filter, goes through the EMI filter, and this is supposed to be ground over here, and it's not. Um, this is pin 2, this is pin 3, and you know that they're pins 2 and 3 because if you look at the schematic and then you trace these out, um, these go across like this one goes to over to C5 uh, over here. Um, the other one goes to uh, it's this one right here. This one, no, as you were, this one goes to C7. Uh, so that's the, the log. You know that this is pin 4 because it runs up and it goes to the negative side of my speaker jack. So then I can conclude that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And so, 
6 is speaker on and it goes to this pin right here that's your, it says speaker on so I don't know if that in the absence of a headphone jack I don't know if that is supposed to be shorted between here and here um, so then that tells the CPU hey I'm not sure I'm not exactly sure how that how that works um, I don't know if it I don't know what it does but when I put the jack in then these two should be shorted pins four and five should be shorted no that's not right these two have to be shorted right here in order for me to get ground potential on the negative side of my jack those two have to be shorted when I put the speaker or when I put the headphone in then it interrupts this or it should interrupt this right here and then it should uh, allow the ground potential to be felt back to the CPU um, I don't know why they call it SP on maybe it doesn't mean speaker on uh, I don't know but in any event that's how it looks like it works anyhow so all right, I don't remember where we left off, but so yesterday we had a discussion about um, our jack. I, I took our jack apart um, and I put it back together because I I don't I don't know whether this jack's good or bad, but I do know that I'm supposed to have ground on this center pin, and when you measure on. So when you check for continuity on that center pin to ground, you do not get it. You do not get continuity. So I kept trying to figure out where that ground was coming from. So when you actually flip this over and you trace that, that path, it comes here. Uh -oh. Got some blurriness. Comes here and it comes to right here. Right? So if we flip that over and check that, that corresponds to that corresponds to this point right here, that via right there. So that means that this capacitor, remember we said that this capacitor was our 5 volts and this is the negative side of that. So, so this capacitor is connected to the center pin, which we said the center pin of our coil, L1, was supposed to be ground. Um, and it's not. So when you trace this, it comes here, it comes to this pad, it comes to this capacitor, and from there I couldn't figure it out. But then I had an idea. I said, okay, well, <clears throat> I said, let's, uh, let's ohm from, let's ohm from our pad to somewhere else and I ended up ohming to right here and if you notice it's a short and then if you see right above this and it's hard to see because all the writing and stuff but there's a via right there and so if you probe from there to that via you'll notice that it is in fact zero ohms well if you flip that via over well it just so happens that that via corresponds to this via right here which is our ground plane um, and so that tells me then that I have continuity here uh, I have continuity from ground to, to there um, but I do not have continuity from that via to ground so this whole time that supplies the ground that goes for, for not only these this capacitor and resistor right uh, right here but this capacitor this capacitor the center portion of our coil all the way back up to our <clears throat> our jack but it also provides the ground for um, our center pin which then is shorted to this pin which then goes to the negative side of our speaker jack so I think if I fix that I'll be good to go. So, all I'm going to do is run a wire, some some wire through there, and then put a big blob of solder on there, and uh, and hope it makes 
connection. I mean, I might be able to do it just with solder, I'm not sure. Well, you know what? We can try it though, huh? We can try it. Put a big dot of solder on there and see if that works. You know what? I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to chance it though, because if I fill that hole with solder, I'll never get it clear. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some wire and put it through that hole and bring it out the other side. Oh, don't don't lose it. I got lucky and got it through there. That sucks, dude. I got so lucky the first time. So we got it through there. So let's see if we can't get some solder to stick. We got it stick on that side. Let's uh. Oh. Let's try to get it stick on this side. I think that is stuck on there. All right, now if I own um, from this pad. from this pad to ground, I should have ground, and I do, which is what it's supposed to be. So there we go. So now, I took so many components off trying to figure this out. I've got to put all these components back on, and then uh, and then we'll go from there. And I'll, once I've got it all back together, we'll plug it in and give it a test. All right, I got all the components back on. Um, so now we're gonna give it a try and hope to goodness the speaker works. It does not, it does not work good, Lord, dude. All right, let's see if the headphones still work. Phone still work? The sound quality, at least, is a little better in the headphones. It doesn't have all that. got one audio coming out of one headphone though. No, I got sound coming out of both. Okay, so I know then 
So that narrows it down. I know I have sound coming out of both, just not the headphones or the speaker. And why is that? I mean, I don't know what else to do. So I don't have ground there anymore. Why don't I have ground there anymore? All right, let's take this back off. I'm never going to get speaker output if I don't get that ground to that center friggin' pin. So do I have ground here? I do. So why don't I have ground? And I, so obviously, I have ground there. So if I have ground, so I have ground, I have ground here, and that ground is this pin here, but I don't have ground there, then that tells me that I have to fix that friggin' via two. Goodness gracious, bro, how many things are broke on this? And every time I do this, I smell that fish smell. So, I mean, it's it's amazing how badly... I mean, this thing didn't look that corroded, you know what I'm saying? But clearly it was. All right. So now, let's break those wires off and try again. Now, do I have friggin' ground to that pin? I do. Which means I have ground to that pin. Or no, this pin. Okay. So that means the friggin' speaker is gonna work. It will work. I know I'm getting audio out of both. 
the right side and the left side because I heard it in the headphones. I heard audio coming out of both. So that, so the only thing that it could possibly be is that. Bamsis. Holy cow, fellas. That stressed me out. Well, and there you have it. A Game Boy or a Game Gear almost fixed. The only thing I wasn't able to fix was the screen. And there's nothing I can do about that. But I did fix. Power board was missing. Um, power board was missing pads after I replaced the capacitors on the power board. So I had to go back in and I had to do some soldering to, to get those to work properly. And once I did that, I was getting my five volts. Uh, but I was still having the cut on cut off issue. And so then I discovered that on T1, on T1, which is right here, this pin that pin was shorted to that leg of T1 which is I'm assuming that's ground and, and that's an input or an output or whatever that was shorted that was preventing the boot so once we cleaned that all up then we got it to boot then we were missing sound and so then on the soundboard we had to replace or we had to fix two vias to ensure that the ground was making it to our headphone jack. So yeah, this was a pretty complicated repair. Uh, and hopefully they'll come out with screens one day and I will be able to completely fix this um, so that somebody can have a nice game gear to use. But yeah, I think that's gonna be the video. I appreciate you watching and we'll see you on the next one.